we use a wealth of data that has been produced by the World Bank, United Nations, over the past 10 years about income distribution around the world. What we do exactly, essentially, we map this income distribution onto energy distribution so we can create global energy distribution knowing how many people uh, consume how much energy and where do they live. We look specifically at the results for five categories. Categories of, the, of those that we identify people with basic human needs, so everyone who consumes not more than five gigajoules per year. They translate in about the basic human needs, so some electricity and some oil for transportation or for eating. Very basic human needs, as defined by the United Nations. The, twice, the second level is twice as much as 10 gigajoules per capita. This is what the United Nations refers to productive uses. So not just basic human needs, but that kind of energy that you need to be productive in society, to, to carry out work, to be able to travel and, and sell your goods or buy and purchase other goods. When we look at the third category, which is 25 gigajoule, which is, again, according to the United Nations, defined as the modern society. What you have in this chart is, on the left, a chart about population. And on the right, a chart about energy. So on the vertical axis, you see the, the five categories that, which I just described. The chart on the left tells you how many people now and in the future, so in the future we mean 2030, 20, 15 years from now, live and reside in which of these categories, of these bins. And what you can see from here is about that 2 billion people are below the, the basic human needs category level. So about 2 billion people now are energy poor, according to this method. And then we have 1 billion people in the second category, then we have some other 1 billion people in up, all, all the way up. From now to 2030, you see that very little change will happen at the bottom, unfortunately. So it will not be the same people. There will be new poor people, but in the end, if you look at the, the poor, which is, to me, category one and two, everyone below productive uses, it's still about three billion people now and then. If you look at the chart of the right, on the other end, you look how, many, how, how much energy is produced by these same people. And what you can essentially show is that there's a huge imbalance. These, these charts are exactly designed to map and design imbalances. Now, what you, what you learn from that chart is that those 3 billion people that now and then will be energy poor are actually responsible for a very minor, minor contribution in terms of total energy. It's pretty obvious, they consume very little. On the other hand, the European averages consume as much as 50% of the total energy. Is that in the lowest category you have people from Sub-Saharan Africa, India and Southeast Asia, mostly. And that will be mostly the same composition even in 2030, although for the very poor category, the contribution of sub-Saharan African will grow. Because Asia is expected to grow faster economically and also to develop more energy consumption. You also can see China moving rapidly upwards towards the more energy consuming categories. So let's assume that by 2030, those 3 billion people, according to these estimates, that won't have otherwise access to these productive uses will be granted access to productive use. And the results suggest that providing uh, global uh, uh, access to, to energy at these productive uses would increase global energy consumption in 2030 by about 10%. It's about 20 extra exojoules for people interested in energy or final energy demand. Now, how that will translate into emissions, it depends how those emissions, uh, that energy will be accomplished. But it's a small fraction. We can provide that energy without caring too much about the emissions which are associated with it, because the emissions are somewhere else. Emissions come from the rich, wherever they live. That's where most of the energy efficiency measures and all the measures that transition to a low carbon world should be implemented. They should not be implemented on the poor, according to this study, because the poor consume and would consume, even if they were allowed to increase their consumption, above productive levels, very little.